What's going on, fellas? Uh, I've been struggling even more than usual to come up with video topics, uh, and I have been neglecting to film my training, which mostly is just because I've been enjoying it. So uh, I'll probably get over that, that streak pretty soon. Uh, Max is competing this weekend. That's priority number one. I've moved my days around a little bit. Uh, so I think I'll be doing my pressing a day early. Hopefully that doesn't throw me off. Resting the day Max is competing uh, and then doing heavy deadlifts that Sunday. So I'm going to try to make sure I get a lot of water and food down while I'm handling Max. Um, I usually try to be really hands-on, make sure Max has everything he needs when he needs it. Make sure I'm keeping a close eye on the clocks to make sure he's warming up when he needs to so he doesn't have to rush and or sit around and try to keep warm. Um, I take a lot of pride in doing a good job handling Max on meet days, so that's going to be my, my priority for the day. But we're going to try to set ourselves up for success on a big deadlift uh, double on Sunday. We'll see how that goes. Probably shouldn't put that out there. Uh, if you don't hear anything about it, it went bad. Um, but because I've been struggling to come up with videos and I haven't been filming my training, even though it's been kind of heavy and interesting recently, um, I, was, I was looking through my comments and I was asked a question that I get asked pretty frequently. Pretty funny that it's asked to me, uh, because if you haven't read uh, Bald Omni-Man's comments on, I think, that first stiff leg repost to me, apparently I just straight up look like Grizzly. Um, but this question is about cutting. And it was like, from, the, from a programming perspective, how should we adjust our training to either retain our muscle mass best during a cut or retain our strength best during a cut? And while I may not look like it, I do know a little bit about coaching a someone on a cut. Uh, it's something I've got a lot of experience with, with the athletes I've coached over the years, and I might have a little bit of an interesting perspective. But this is a question that gets thrown out there uh, quite a bit. They're like, oh, I don't want to get weaker on my cut. Oh, I don't want to get weaker on my cut. Um, so on and so forth. Do I need to train exclusively heavy? Should I train exclusively for volume to drive a greater caloric deficit? What changes should I be making to my training while I'm on my cut to make sure that I retain what I've built? Um, and the first and foremost, the, one of the biggest indicators or one of the biggest predictors of how much of your muscle you might retain or how much of your strength you might retain is probably doing that cut in a controlled manner rather than straight up suicide cutting because uh, it's going to be very difficult to retain your muscle mass or your strength when we just do a nuclear cut, especially for a reasonably prolonged period of time. So A, that comes down to not over bulking to the point where we have a ton of weight to strip off and two, uh, doing so in a meticulous and gradual manner right, with a high protein intake. So before program comes into play, doing the cut in a well-measured way, not just eating, so maybe even increasing our protein uh, intake all the way up, maybe even a little bit above one gram per pound, all the way maybe to 1.2 can help us with that, uh, making sure that we're losing weight at a steady rate of maybe a half pound per week. Um, if you feel like it, you could probably go to a full pound per week, but I generally recommend a half pound. But that'd be the first thing I would say is, hey, programming aside, let's just take a look at how we're doing this and make sure we're not doing this like an impatient idiot, right? And that's that's probably the first thing I would look at. But from a programming perspective, uh, this is the part where I maybe might have a little bit different advice, right? So our training is our stimulus to our body to keep strong and to keep our muscle mass, right? So logically speaking, if we have a training load that has been associated with the level of strength we've gotten to, we've built up our work capacity with time, we've developed an ability to do X number of the main sets, X number of accessories. Uh, if we want to retain that strength or that muscle mass, we can keep that signal that built it, right? So we're trying to keep our training as similar to when we were bulking or at maintenance as we can. Uh, it might come to, when push comes to shove, you might find that your recovery capabilities have tailored off to the point where you need to drop back the number of working sets slightly. But in practical application, I usually find that people get in better shape while they cut, uh, and that usually counteracts whatever smaller amount of recovery capacity they have. Those two things cancel out. Uh, and they end up having to handle the exact same workload. And that is what's going to keep your muscle mass around, and that is what is going to keep you strong. I think that for most of us, if we're really measured with our diet and we're meticulous with it, uh, a lot of people, until they get to like straight up maybe intermediate, can absolutely get stronger while they're cutting, maybe even all the way to advanced. I think once you're advanced, it's gonna be a bit of an ask to get stronger at something you've been training for a long time while you're cutting. And this brings me to something Freaky D has talked about, which is, hey, just throw a new variation in there. Uh, the, the fact that it's a novel stimulus will outweigh the fact that you're in a deficit. So you could just get, if you haven't done pause squats in years, uh, you can habitually get stronger at pause squats even while you're cutting. And that could be an opportunity to 
continue moving something forward with your training if you're advanced. But if you're not, there's a good chance you can continue to get stronger while cutting. Uh, the big thing is the absence of a surplus or the absence of maintenance is going to slow that down, right? So rather than our caloric intake informing our workload that much, just in practical application, I listened to a video of Mike T talking about this. Uh, where he had people on Project Momentum, which is a big free program, seeing how a bunch of people respond to a couple different variables to answer some questions he had. And in the questionnaire, he had to put whether they were cutting, bulking, uh, so on and so forth. And he did not notice a significant impact on their work capacity and the number of sets they could handle per week. Um, so it's one of those things that sounds really good on paper that, oh, you're going to be handle, able to handle this many more work sets while you're bulking and less while you're cutting. But in reality, what I see uh, as a coach is that it instead informs how much progress you make from roughly-ish the same workload. But to drive home my point, what I would recommend you do is try to keep your training as close to normal as you can. Maybe expect slowed down progression or maybe even at worst maintenance. If you start sliding backwards, you probably have been cutting for too long or too aggressively. I might introduce a, like a, a maintenance phase for a little bit because you can look to, um, to some degree, you can look to your performance metrics to inform whether you're doing your cut right. If you start sliding backwards rapidly, probably something is not being done optimally, but this is just my opinion as a fat guy. So uh, I hope you guys find this video interesting. Um, as always, if you got potential video topics, I'm all ears. Thank you for watching.